every town around the world, there are documentary filmmakers being born. They use the true stories in their environment as inspiration. These are their stories. started with my antique watch collection and vintage watches and clocks and then I had the opportunity to make a movie about Jim Doherty, Marilyn Monroe's first husband who lives in Maine and then I liquidated my collection and I said I gotta make this movie. It's a sort of story that has to be told and that's how it happened. What's going on brother? What's love? Shawnee was an antiques collector before he started this film so he had incredible things that he used to buy from us. Most people have one pawn ticket. These are Shawnee's pawn tickets. And I can kind of tell from the progression of the movie. But as you can see, Shawnee had quite a bit of stuff when he started this project. So here we have all of Shawnee's tickets. The top ticket is even his car. <laughs> he has pawned everything he owns to get this project done. And that's why we have so much faith in him because he's given up everything. Given up everything to make this film. That's Shawnee's sacrifice right there. And yes, in this beautiful park where there's a lot of restaurants around it and businesses, there's a commune of kids on heroin living there and they're homeless. And I met about 35, 40 different kids there, and I got seven of them on uh, tape. So when I saw these kids, I could have ended up that way if I didn't quit drugs and go to college. So I felt something like giving back. Is this going to focus on one corporation or just no. about the corporate culture? It focuses on, it's a, bu it's a bunch of, I mean, there's many case studies to, that help us illustrate the nature of the institution of the modern business corporation. That's what it's trying to get at. There are companies that make our lives better, and that's a good thing. The problem comes in the profit motivation. Liz Claiborne jackets, $178, and the workers were paid 74 cents. Hi, Mark Ackbar. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with these images. <laughs> Beautiful. And sound. In all media, in perpetuity, that's what you want to hear. Um, like I said, it's basically a documentary on, on the life of a documentary. And I made a little sort of rock video before anyone had ever seen a rock video. I mean, in the style of, what, what was that film, that wonderful um, fake, uh, fake... The mockumentary? The mockumentary, the um, classic. Uh, I think it's a good profession maybe for people with ADD. Uh, what are we drinking? Spinal Tap! That's it! Spinal Tap! God! You got it! It took me 40 hours to edit this thing on a reel-to-reel -reel video editing thing. and. I'd probably never concentrated that long on anything before, on any kind of project, and uh, it was such a, uh, it was so much fun that I thought, man, if, if this is what it's like to make films, this could be fun. Let's go downstairs, let's go basement. Oh, we can lock ourselves in a closet. There's a closet there I see with some supplies in it. Maybe downstairs and far away financial uh, duress under which most documentary filmmakers work is enough to drive most of them out of the uh, business, if we can even call it a business. Uh, I'm something over $300,000 personally in debt. I had to um, mortgage my house, liquidate all my savings just to get this film out. And, it, and it's odd, the more successful the film is, the more draining it actually is financially. I have this wonderful faith in reality, I guess you'd put it that way, that, that um, 
uh, I can get access to almost anybody and uh, that what they might say and do I can I can record so faithfully and give the people that I'm filming that kind of confidence just by looking at them uh, uh, there are so many stories that I can do so well I really got inspired about the potential for um, making movies when I actually began to make them myself. Well, when I went to Russia and, and uh, got into the mental hospitals and came back with, this, with uh, material and a story um, that no one knew of before, uh, and I felt, yeah, this is much better than writing about it or, or um, drawing pictures or whatever. This was the medium that was right for me. I believe somehow, quite correctly, that a movie camera can uh, pick up stuff that uh, even the eye doesn't catch or remember. And uh, I wanted that kind of authenticity. The real thing is being there with an unobtrusive camera. Now we can do it with a video camera, so it's even all the less obtrusive. In my own lifetime, um, I guess I'm basically just an adventurer. And, and so I've been just about everywhere. And so with a purpose, not only of just enjoying the adventure, but of recording it and passing that on to millions of people, you know, it makes it all the more worthwhile and exciting.